I want you to go to the phone or online and sow a seed. Now remember, raise the amount, raise the level of seed so you can release faith with it. And when you release faith with it, you trigger the harvest. It's that simple. And that harvest may trigger other harvests, literally for seed you've sown in the past that you've not seen the, the results of. So sow it, but raise your faith level. That's the key. Because you've sown maybe amounts in the past that you haven't seen much happen because, see, they were in lower altitudes. There, there wasn't much going on because sparing reaping means it, it takes a long time for it to come. Bountiful reaping means it happens fast. Listen, this is a key I just gave you. He that soweth sparingly, reaps sparingly, means it comes very slowly. It may take a year or two. He that soweth bountifully, it comes back faster. Why? Because higher plateaus, higher faith. Greater amounts, the, if, if the seed is greater, it releases greater faith. I'm Michael Jordan. Stop it. Get some help. Ecclesiastes 11.2. So a portion of seven, also of eight. When you do that, you protect your future and you release the harvest. And not only do you release the harvest, you bring the harvest for the seed that you've sown in the past of little amounts where it's taking too long to come back. So bring it, trigger the harvest by sowing a higher amount of seed. Release a higher amount of faith. Do it right now. Quickly, go to the phones, pick up the phone right now, and call the number on the screen, and sow the seed that God has put in your heart. Let the amount come straight from the Lord, come straight from heaven, and obey. Obedience is, is, is the key. And if it doesn't hurt, it doesn't work. Trust me, I'm going to tell you this. If it doesn't hurt on the inside, it doesn't work. He that soweth precious seed means it's the last from the bottom of the barrel will come back rejoicing, bringing the harvest with him. So you've got to do what God is telling you now. Do it now, or online, or send it, Post Office Box 16 Irving, Texas. Do it now. What's wrong with you people? <laughs> I'm serious. So it's all about our brokenness, our old man. We call that the flesh must be broken, must be out of the way. And today, sadly, among a lot of circles, all you hear is how to build the flesh. It's a feel-good message. That's what you hear out there. It's all about feel good, do good, all that. Make money, all the rest of it. And I'm sorry to say, that prosperity has gone a little crazy. And I'm correcting my own uh, 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 theology. And you need to all know it. Because when I read the Bible now, I don't see the Bible in the same eyes I saw the Bible 20 years ago. And Steve Strang from Charisma, whom we go back years, he actually, he was in my wedding. People don't even know that Charisma Magazine began with my father-in-law. Charisma Magazine started with Roy Harden, and I married his daughter. So Steve Strang was in, in my wedding. We go way back. And he's already asked me, said, are you ready to make it public? I said, well, not Totally. Because I don't want to hurt my friends whom I love, who believe things I don't believe anymore. And I will tell you now something that you, it's, it's going to shock you. I think it's an offense to the Lord. It's an offense to say, give a thousand dollars. I think it's offense to the Holy Spirit to place a price on the gospel. I'm done with it. I will never again ask you to give a thousand or whatever amounts because I think the Holy Ghost is just fed up with it. Are you, did you hear me? I think that hurts the gospel. 
So I'm making this statement for the first time in my life. And frankly, I don't care what people think about me anymore. So I, I, I had a guy. Well, I'll tell you who. It was Dan Willis. I, I, I love Dan with all my heart. I said, don't you dare preach that message again. Just a few days ago, I said, no, no, I said, when, when, I'm not going to hear it. I don't want to be a part of it. So I, when they invite me to telethons, I think they will not like me anymore. <laughs> because if you look at the Word of God, I don't want to get into it now. Am I shocking you? Good, let's have a high five on this one. If I hear one more time, break the back of debt with a thousand dollars, I'm going to rebuke them. Oh! I, I think that's buying the gospel, that's buying the blessing, that's grieving the Holy Spirit. That's about all I will say. If you are not giving because you love Jesus, don't bother giving. I think giving has become such a gimmick, it's making me sick to my stomach. And I've been sick for a while too, I just couldn't say it. And now the lid is off. I've had it. You know why? I don't want to get to heaven and be rebuked. No, I think it's time we say it like it is. The gospel is not for sale. Get over here! And the blessings of God are not for sale. And miracles are not for sale. And... Prosperity is not for sale.